to concentrating on my breath. I can take a sacred pause. I can create a safe space for my mind by focusing on my breath. I used to feel mentally agitated and unstable, but now I can soothe my nervous system. I can use wise concentration to choose what to focus on. I do not have to label things bad or good. I do not have to fixate on anything. I can concentrate on my physical sensations and release the stories. I still honor my truth by gently accepting my feelings and not trying to change them in any way. I also practice not becoming hypno dash tis by the stories I tell myself. When I experience racing thoughts, I try to remember to pause before acting so I can engage with others more skillfully. I try to engage with myself more skillfully too. I talk to myself kindly, write myself love letters, and listen to affirmations relative to my mood. I try to remember that I am human, and I can accept the ebbs and flows of this experience. I am intentional with my time now. I wake up early so I can meditate and do my rituals before my daughter wakes up. I love trying new meditations and sampling different spiritual practices. When if dash or I do a mindless activity like scrolling on social media, even if for a duration as short as three minutes, I start to feel like a zombie. I can hear my wiser self saying, put the phone down. In these instances, I can practice mindfulness by listening to my wiser self and intuition that disconnecting is not serving me. I still get stressed. I am a single mother and going to school. I have learned to reach out to others when I feel overwhelmed. I concede, dash, tently confide in my wise friends, my sponsor, and my therapist. I try to get their perspective on a difficult or confusing situation before speaking or acting. Another thing I do is check if I am hungry, angry, lonely, or tired before coming to conclusions. I also use breathwork, ASMR, and binaural beats to calm my nervous system and aid my brain in relaxing. I am a bit of a perfectionist, but when I find I am being too hard on myself, I remember to breathe and smile at the inner critic when she makes an appearance. The breath creates space in my mind and heart. After calming down, I can ask myself if I am seeing clearly or through. Filters created in the past, i.e. trauma or learned harmful thinking path. Dash. Turns. I can name the unhelpful additional information as stories and remember that they are contributing to my suffering by adding more. Confusion. Today, I feel empowered. I try to be present in every aspect of my life. As a single parent and the legal guardian of my sister, I am. Dash. Divorced and ever. Check out. And I try to treat my girls with respect and gentleness. I seek out information to understand where they are developed. Dash. OP mentally so I can have wise understanding of their capacity. I try to remember the basic goodness in people. I recognize that each person is dealing with their own complications, which are causing them to react in habitual ways. 
since I have found recovery dharma, I have also been able to help others with their recovery. And I can do this because I now sincerely know that I no longer doubt my own ability to recover. I have become confident that this journey of lifelong growth is the path I was meant to walk. I will continue to dedicate my life to my personal Evo dash pollution and healing, and I will keep spreading love and light endlessly. My goal is to leave every moment better than I found it. Anything that passes by me will experience my love. Ned. About seven years ago my administrative assistant told me that I had an urgent call from my significant other. I stopped typing on my computer and grabbed the phone. My partner, Victor, did not wait for me to say hello. There's someone here at the house from the water calm. Dash. Haney telling me he is turning off our water service. He shouted into the phone. What? I thought for a minute. I owned the house. Lived there. With Victor for about 13 years. Was a partner in a prestigious law firm. Had all the outward appearances of a successful attorney, and yet my $100 water bill that was 60 days overdue. I had Victor put the guy on the phone and begged him to stop and take a credit card for payment. He said all right. I flipped through my wallet looking for a credit card. That still had $100 available and took my best guess. It worked. No water. Shut off. Lucky me. Not so much. How did life get to that chaotic point? Well, I was in a 10-year relapse after abstaining from gambling. I had been clean for 12 years at one point then went back out, and stopped and started in spurts, and fits, until I just gambled until I couldn't gamble anymore. In 12, step recovery I always disliked the term, flip, as I believe the central theme of Gamblers Anonymous, the desire to stop gambling, was the most crucial requirement to progress into recovery. I knew I didn't slip. Rather, over a period of several years of not working any programs, I had lost the desire to abstain. Once that desire was gone, I felt no bar. Dash. Rears and re-entered the gambling arena with a vengeance. The compulsion took over my life, as I started to spend more time at local casinos than at my law office. I went before work. I went after work. Initially, I brought a limited amount of cash with me suffy. Dash. See it to play for a while and left when it was gone. If I won, I might leave with some winnings, but returned within days to gamble away the winnings and more. Over the period of about five years, I depleted my checking and savings accounts, threw down most of my retirement accounts for which I still owe taxes on to this day, and worse, had to borrow against my house which I eventually had to sell to get out of. The large mortgage payments used other people's money which caused massive shame and self-loathing and had to borrow from payday lend. Dash. Furs against my cars which were old and needed to be replaced in the first place. Gamblers learn as I did that it is not just about the lost pawn. Dash. E.Y. We lose time. We lose focus. 
perspective, integrity, and drive. Our primary relationships falter. Our family and friends can sense that there is a hidden problem even if they don't become fully aware of the real problem. Our actions poison relationships with family, friends and call. Dash. Lee. I experienced all these losses. Victor no longer trusted me. I rare. Dash. Lee came home until the sun was coming up and he was leaving for his job. I was short-tempered. I was in that mode where one only looks at everything or every person in their life as a means to get something else. For me, that was to get money to gamble and to somehow survive until I could gamble again. During most of my life, I was active in the LGBTQ and Jewish communities, my legal profession, community service, and in health and education charities, losing the drive, focus, time, and resources that I used to bring to this work resulted in it all but evaporating from my life. My creative outlets and hobbies such as photography, cooking, writing, and music also dried up. Instead, I spent the majority of my days figuring out the minimum things that I needed to do to just get by at work and in life and then spent the rest of the day gambling, figuring out how to get more money to gamble, how to cover the increasing dangers from maxed out credit cards, NSF checks, and ridiculously high cost payday loans. I had to sell assets or let them go, such as a timeshare which I could no longer pay the yearly maintenance, and some artwork I had managed to collect over the years. I cancelled vacations, I cancelled home services, Victor picked up the slack around the house but not without just cause for multiple resentments. In sum, everything I had worked on and for over the years, a stable relationship, a successful workplace, community, dash, high engagement and a reputation for integrity, were all crumbling under the weight of my insatiable compulsion to gamble. When I look back at the chaos and suffering during the day's end, my active addiction, I am most cognizant of my loss of choices. It often felt like my car simply took me to the casino after work. My ability to make wise or safe choices was completely obliterated. The tentacles of my addictive cravings wrapped around every nook and cranny of my brain. Until I became focused on one thing, gambling, or as it's often called, staying in action. I somehow had a block against going back to my 12-step pro. Dash. Graham after all those years, in action. I was not wanting to hear J-U-D-G. Dash. Mental and directive comments, whether well intended or otherwise. From the DA members that I would encounter. Instead I turned to a recommended therapist who special dead in addiction. Among the helpful advice I received from him was that I try a program that he was aware of that was based on Buddhist principles and rule of the traditional 12 step approach. I followed his advice and never looked back at recovery. Dharma, I found a non-judgmental space where I could make changes and have a unique and empowered recovery experience. Through my time in Buddhist recovery programs, and most AC, Dash, 
tightly and consistently in recovery dharma, I have learned that I do have choices. I can choose how I act in the face of stress, disappoint, dash, men, and even happiness. Developing a meditation practice, attending, and sharing meetings, writing detailed inquiries, meeting with Sangha, members outside meetings to share our experiences, have all been key. Components in finding a better way to live, learning the different key, dash, between feelings and emotions on one hand, and wise action on the other. Changed everything for me, it opened me up to change my conduct and choose the compassionate or loving response to tough situations, along with seeking forgiveness from those I harm, learning how to act calm, dash, passionately and practice forgiveness of myself and others, or peace. Lessons I have gained from working through the path suggested by Rose. It is not magic. It is not instantaneous. It takes work. For an addict, that is very frustrating. We want things right now. I was inactive. Gambling addiction in the last round for about 15 years, and yet I expected the cleanup would take a year or two. How many journeys work? Like that, experiencing the length of time it is taking for me to dig out. Much of the mess that I created through my own actions is one of the hardest but most important lessons I have learned. Not letting that on go, dash. Inexperience follow me like a cloud is also part of the learning. Letting go of what was and living in what is has been key to improving my life. And so if it takes longer than I hope to get right again, I have also learned to let go of the idea of instantly getting my old life back. A compulsive gambler always thinks about getting it back. Me. Next bet, the next machine, the next deal, the next hand, always beckon. With a mysterious allure of an instant fix. That unreal imagery is not for me anymore. Today I try to live in the present, in the day, in the meeting, in the concert, in the moment. I make sure that I am mindful of what is happening and how I am experiencing it right at that moment. I double check with myself and sift through emotions and feelings to understand how they inform what might be my most constructive or compassionate reaction. I ask myself what is the wisest response in light of these concepts. Dash. Orations. The issues do not have to be monumental. They can be as easy. Dash. Faride is how I consciously respond to a rude sales clerk to the response I provide to an employee that delivers a disappointing performance on an assigned project, working through situations with the ability to provide. A considered response over a knee-jerk reaction provides a much more satisfying and peaceful way to live. Certain other key concepts from RD enhance the path forward. Service has been key in my recovery, from starting meetings to helping other members with their projects. Sangha has also been important. P. Connections we make through service and activity within a Sangha create a web of protection based on a couple of important attributes that we rarely experience during active addiction, trust and honesty. We learn that we can have relationships based on these qualities outside of the Sangha.